Hey everyone, Simon here from Top Tennis Training and in this video I want to help you to handle those high backhands. Now it's one of the most commonly asked questions we get here at Top Tennis Training. How can I deal with those high backhands? This is for the one-handers and the two-handers out there. And in this video I'm going to show you five main methods that you can use to handle those high backhands. Before we get into the five methods, I just want to say that these will work for both the single handers out there and the two handers out there. There are slight differences when you are using the different methods and I'll go over those as we progress through the video. So number one is the common way. This will be when you have the high back and you recognize it's coming high to your back end and you move back. So you're moving back and you're letting the ball drop to a reasonable height, somewhere that you like hitting the ball from, your ideal contact point. If your ideal contact point is here and that high ball is coming and you see you're going to have to hit the ball up here by moving back and letting the ball drop, if I move back a few steps, I'm able now to let that ball drop until it reaches that ideal contact point. Now the upside of this one is that you're moving back and you're hitting it at a more comfortable height. The downside is you're moving back so you're creating a lot of space for your opponent. You're giving up a lot of court. By moving so far back to handle these high balls, you're now forced to hit that high ball and then get back into a good position as quickly as you can, otherwise you've given up a lot of space on the baseline. So if you're someone who likes to do this, just be aware that when you do hit that shot, you have to execute a really good shot. Most of the time you'll hit this ball back cross court with a lot of height to give yourself time to get back into position. Option number two now is the opposite of option one. Option one, we're moving back. Option two, we're moving in to take the ball before it rises too high. So if we can recognize early that the ball is coming high and it is coming to our backhand and we have good enough footwork, we can move in and take that ball as it's rising before it hits too high on that bounce. Now the benefits of doing this would be you're maintaining a very good court position and you're also taking time away from your opponent. Most of the time when players hit a high ball to your back end, they hope that you'll move back and give them a lot of space so they can then start dictating the point. By moving forward and taking the ball on the rise, you're not allowing that to happen and you're maintaining a very uh, aggressive core position and you're also taking that time away from your opponent so the next shot for them is harder to attack. Now note that when you do take the ball on the rise, you're going to have to shorten your swing so it's going to allow you to time that ball out in front. That's for the one-handers and the two-handers out there. You also have to be very quick with your feet to get in the right position to hit that ball while it's rising. If I'm sloppy with my footwork, I won't be in the right position to hit a well executed shot. Now another thing to note, when you do take the ball on the rise, this is an aggressive mindset. When I move back, I'm almost defending. When I move forward, it's much more aggressive. So don't add too much power because the habit, the tendency when someone does take the ball on the rise, especially on the backhand is they go for more because it's an aggressive mindset and they're already being aggressive so they add even more aggression on that shot and this will cause you to hit a lot of unforced errors. So you want to maintain composure on that shot and the reason that you're taking the ball on the rise is not to give up space and to hit the ball at a better spot. It's not to be aggressive and to finish the point. And option number three now is the slice backhand. So this is a great option if you don't feel comfortable hitting a drive either by moving back or moving forward. If you're someone who prefers a slice, this is a great option, a great way to deal with those high backhands. The two main benefits of doing this is, firstly, if you prefer that slice, this is going to be more natural for you, so it's easier to handle that high backhand if you like that slice. The second reason to use this will be to keep the ball low on the bounce. So when you execute a well 
hit slight, hopefully that ball is going to stay low, so it's going to be harder for your opponent to attack you on the next shot. Now the downside is, if you don't execute the shot well, and you almost float the ball back into play, you're going to be on the back foot and your opponent's going to be able to finish the point on the next shot. So you have to really execute the slice well if you're going to use this option. Option number four now is to run around and hit an inside out or inside in forehand. Now, in order to do this, you have to recognize very early that the ball is coming to your backhand and it's coming high and you have the time to get around the ball and hit that forehand. This is a great option when you do have time, especially on slower surfaces like a clay court or like a slow hard court. If you have the time, this is a great way to get around that shot and be aggressive on this shot. Now this option will be the second most aggressive way to handle those high backhands. Option number five will be the most aggressive. Now when you are doing this option, if you choose to hit a forehand, make sure you really get around that ball very quickly in order to hit that ball before it comes too high. If I allow that ball to bounce and I'm hitting it at shoulder or head height, most likely I have to hit it kind of like a loopy ball back into court and I'm in a very bad position because I'm far off the court, especially if it's a wide ball. So I have to be very quick in getting around that ball and being able to hit that ball in an aggressive way. If I'm sloppy with the feet, I'll be out of position and I'll be hitting the ball at an uncomfortable height. And option number five now is the most aggressive one. This is when you recognize early that it, the ball is coming high and you choose to move in and hit it before it bounces. Now, by doing so, you're taking a lot of time away from your opponent. So you're being very aggressive with time. You're also in a very aggressive position on the court. By moving in, you're able to hit that ball and then transition into net, hopefully. If you don't transition into net, you're stuck in no man's land, so you're gonna to have to be very quick at hitting that dry volley and then moving back into a good uh, position on the court. Now, by choosing this option, this will help you to hopefully finish the point. This will be a transition shot. Instead of letting the ball bounce and hitting it on the rise, you're taking the ball in the air and you're moving forward and hopefully gonna finish the point at the net. So there you have it guys, the five different methods that you can deal with those high backhands. Now for the two-handers out there, there's also one more option, and this is the jumping backhand. This is something that David Nalbandian made very popular, Marit Safin, Marcelo Rios, all of these players used that option when the ball was high and they had time, they'd run up and hit that drive with a jump. Now there are some players who also do this on the one-hander, but it's a harder shot to time. The out there, we have that option, and if you work on this, this can be a very good way to handle those high balls. So here's a brief recap. Option one, you're moving back. Option two, you're moving in to take the ball on the rise. Option number three, you're hitting a slice backhand. Option four, you're hitting an inside out or inside in forehand, so you've run around that ball to hit your forehand. And option number five, you're hitting the dry volley. Play around with each one, work on each method because you always have to adapt. There won't be one way that you'll deal with these high backhands. Some balls will require you to move back. Some balls will require you to hit a forehand. Some balls will require a slice. So you have to master each one so that when you are in a match, and when you have those high balls, you're able to count on that autopilot to deal with that ball. Now, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell so you get our latest videos as soon as we release them. Thanks for the support, guys. Leave a comment down below. Let us know what you want to see in the near future. Diamond from TTT signing off. All the best, guys. See you soon.